Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I am jumping in and working on the newest devotional kit from Illustrated Faith. This is 2020 Vision, and uh, this was written by Tiffany. I have a full unboxing of this kit. I will link it down below. The physical kit is sold out. However, there are digital versions for the notebooks and the ephemera, and then there's also some of the pieces individually listed in the Illustrated Faith shop. Um, I think like the devotional booklet, maybe some of the ephemera pieces. So you can kind of um, piece together and make your own kit if you missed out on the physical one to begin with, but I'll have all those links down below for you guys. And I'm jumping right into the first devotional. So the way this one is broken up is into four devotional chunks. So I'm working on faith vision and I'm working on this prompt here in second Corinthians five, seven, talking about walking in faith. And I already did a little bit of prep uh, off camera, just putting my journaling together. I had a lot of prayer journaling. I initially did this piece here to go underneath this card, um, but then I came back and did some additional journaling as well. So I'm going to do kind of a little uh, tip up here for all of my prayer journaling to be a little more discreet in there. This is one of the journaling cards that comes in the kit. Uh, I will link you know, substitutes down below for you guys. I have some of the acetate pieces that I have pulled out. Uh, I'm going to show you some tips for adhering these because I get a lot of questions about that. Uh, die cut piece that came in the kit, die cut piece that came in the kit. Um, this one here is from a past Illustrated Faith kit and I'm trying to use up some of my past supplies. I'm using the stamp set as well and then I have some grid washi from Felicity Jane. I will have this linked down below as well. So um, I made you some other stamping and things like that but it's going to be fairly Really simple and I just wanted to kind of jump in and get started so let me go ahead and put you guys on fast forward and we will put this page together okay so I'm gonna jump around just a little bit as I kind of work this out in my head how I want this layered so I'm kind of laying down the acetate pieces where I think that they are gonna go on my page here the nice thing with the acetate pieces is they are see-through so I can see the text um, so this is a fun way to get color over the Bible text and not have to be worried about accidentally covering it so this is gonna be kind of my layout here. And I decided I wanna do some stamping before I stick down those acetate pieces. Acetate can be very difficult to stamp on um, because it's a slick surface. So you wanna be mindful of the layering that you do and the order that you lay down things on your page. So here I pulled out those Kelly, is it Kelly Bradford? stamps. Um, these were in the Illustrated Faith shop. They are sold out, but they were still available over in Kelly's shop, so I will try to link them down below for you guys. These are the outline ones, and I'm stamping out 2020. Now, this didn't quite come out in my head how I thought it was going to come out. Um, these numbers are very, very, very large. <laughs> so um, it works in the illustrating Bible. I think that it would be kind of difficult to recreate this in a standard Bible. Um, without covering you know, some of the text. The open line stamping does help with that because you can see the text, but uh, I don't know. They, I just, I hadn't used them yet and so I wanted to, wanted to put them to work. So here I'm pulling out the stamp set from the kit. I kind of want to layer the word vision over the 2020, but that ends up not happening. Instead, I pull out this uh, texture stamp with all these little crosses. And I'm just adding those to those acetate clusters before I stick down the acetate clusters because again, I don't want to stamp over the top of those. And right now they are not adhered down, they're just sitting on the page. But I wanted to put together my little flip up piece here. That way I don't have a whole bunch of pieces floating around my desk while I'm working here. So I'm just layering things up. I wanted that amen cloud up at the top to still be seen. Um, and so I'm just, you know, kind of layering things, letting things hang off because it's a tip up. It's okay if it covers up text and things like that. All right, so here is one of two ways to adhere down these acetate pieces. Um, there are a lot of different ways, but I'm gonna show you two here. So I'm using the Xyron sticker maker, which is perfect for smaller pieces like uh, those four that I have there. And basically it just applies adhesive to the entire back side of the acetate. Um, I did cut down that one circle piece. I thought that I'd be able to get it to fit into the Xyron, but it was just a little big. So these are way simple to use when they've gone through the Xyron sticker maker. You can just um, peel them off the backing and they are good to go. And since the adhesive covers the entire back side, you can't see the adhesive. So just sticking those down. I made sure to highlight the verse, which is uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And then I use that little half green bubble to kind of further highlight where the verse is. 
I don't recommend moving these once you've stuck them down like I did here. Um, it does leave a lot of adhesive on the page. Um, which can be an issue. So you need to commit when, once you stick them down. And then I like to go over them with my powder tool just to remove any stickiness or any glue that might be exposed. All right, here's the second way to adhere these. So one of you actually reminded me of this tip and I forgot to mention it in the unboxing, uh, is to use some clear liquid glue. And you can see I'm putting a good amount of it on the back of the acetate piece. I'll do it again here for that other pink circle. So I'm gonna put a big blob of glue on there and then I'm just gonna use my finger to smooth out the liquid glue. That way it covers the entire back side of the acetate. That's kind of the key with these is to make sure whatever adhesive you're using covers the entire surface. That way you can't really see uh, where the tape is. If you use like a tape runner or something like that, you can see the adhesive through the acetate. You can see with that liquid glue, it just, you know, suction cups right onto the page and it's all smoothed out and you can't see um, where you have the adhesive. It's a little bit messier than the Xyron sticker maker. They do have a larger Xyron sticker maker, um, which is something you might want to look into getting if you like working with larger pieces, like making bigger stickers, working with a lot of acetate, that might be something to look into. I will try to link it down below so you guys have that option as well. Real quick on screen, I created a little tip up piece there just with two pieces of washi tape, very simple. And adhered down my other piece of journaling so that it's covered by that tip up piece. And now I'm just adding some embellishment to this card. I'm pulling out that banner stamp just to show you one of the many ways that you can use that. So you can stamp the rectangle first and then the little banner fish ends can go, you know, right in line with the banner and they can go up up a little bit or down a little bit like I did here and it kind of alters and changes the way that that banner looks. And the phrase be thou my fits right into that one. And then here's vision. So be thou my vision is what that title is gonna be on there. And I'm gonna finish this up here. Off camera, I had wrote out the verse as four seven and it's not, it's five seven. So I'm just pulling out some uh, tile alpha stickers or number stickers and fixing that real quick. And then for my tab, I've pulled out a little bit more of that grid washi. Those eyeglass die cut pieces are from the kit. And then this was just a fabric tab that I had in my stash that was a little bit similar to the colors um, that were on the page and it had this like circular pattern on it. So it kind of matched what I had going on the page there. That way I just have a little bit of a tab popping out at the top and that is going to be it for the entry today. So here's a look at the finished page. I got plenty of room for all of my journaling. And then on the back side, you'll see here, I didn't really have bleed through. I had heavy shadowing just because my Versafine ink pad was very like brand new. So it's super juicy, um, but typically I don't have that much shadowing. So there's a look at the finished page. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box to links to everything that I talked about today. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.